Hello, welcome to our channel Learn Mechanical Engineering. Up to now, in the previous classes, we have been solving problems under the topic statics and equilibrium of particles in two dimension. From now, we will see what is statics and equilibrium of particles in three dimensions. So before going to that, first we will see three dimensional force system. The approach that we are going to follow here in three dimensional force system is vectorial approach. So hence, before going to the three dimensional force system, first let us see what is a vector. So a vector is nothing but scalar product of unit vector. So it is nothing but vector is nothing but a product of scalar and unit vector. And now to understand this vector, consider two points A, B. So let the in space consider two points A, B in space, and it is not passing through x-axis or y-axis or z-axis it is passing through two points a b it is not parallel to x-axis not parallel to y-axis and it is also not parallel to z-axis you are considering two points in space and the point a coordinate is x1 y1 and let the coordinates of point b b x2 y2 z2 now the vector a b can be written as the vector a b can be written as b minus a that is coordinate point of b minus coordinate point of a so b minus a can be written as x2 minus x1 i vector plus y2 minus y1 j vector plus z2 minus z1 k vector where i vector is unit vector along x axis j vector is unit vector along y axis and k vector is the unit vector along z axis so a b vector can be written as b minus a and now to find out the distance between this a b the distance d can be written as modulus of a b vector that is to find out the magnitude of the distance between these two points a b this d can be written as modulus of a b vector so modulus of a b vector is nothing but square root of we know a b vector equal to x2 minus x1 i vector plus y2 minus y1 j vector plus z2 minus z1 k vector so modulus of a b vector is square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square and since this passing through points a b the line of action or passing through points of this a b is not parallel to x axis not parallel to y axis and not parallel to z axis so if it is parallel to x axis means you can write scalar into i vector if it is parallel to y axis means you can write that magnitude into j vector and if it is parallel to z axis means you can write that magnitude into k vector but this is passing this passing through points or line of action is not parallel to any of the axis means then the unit vector along this passing through point or line of action is n cap a b the unit vector along the passing through points are you can write it as n cap a b if it is not parallel to i j k then the unit vector along the passing through points or that line of action is n cap a b so formula for finding out this unit vector n cap a b is this a b vector divided by modulus of a b vector so this formula you are going to use in all the problems to find out the unit vector along any line of action or any passing through points which is not parallel to x y and z so the formula for unit vector that is n cap a b is a b vector divided by modulus of a b vector we know formula for finding out a b vector and formula for finding out modulus of a b vector and now for to understand this more clearly consider a force of magnitude 100 newton is passing is acted upon a line which is passing through the points a b so a force of magnitude 100 newton is acting in the line of action which is passing through two points a b so if a coordinate point of a is 2 comma 3 comma 1 and coordinate point of b is 5 comma 4 comma 0 so a force of 100 newton is passing through these two points a b coordinate point of a is given and coordinate point of b is given so they have given the magnitude of force alone how to find out the force vector we know that force vector is equal to scalar into unit vector so scalar is magnitude of the force ef into unit vector along the line of action of any passing through point is n cap a b so the unit vector is n cap a b so force force only with magnitude is scalar 
So I have to multiply that scalar with unit vector. The unit vector along this line of action of this AB is n cat AB. So yeah, magnitude of force F they have given as 100 into, we know that unit vector is unit vector or unit vector along this AB. The formula for unit vector n cap AB is equal to AB vector divided by modulus of AB vector. So what is AB vector? We know that this A point is x1, y1, z1. This B point is x2, y2, z2. So what is AB vector? B vector minus A vector. So B vector minus A vector means 5 minus 2, 3A vector. 4 minus 3 plus J vector. 0 minus 1, minus 1, K vector. So AB vector is 3A plus J minus K divided by, what is modulus of AB vector? Square modulus of AB, the, the equation in numerator is AB vector. So modulus of AB vector means square root of 3 square is 9, 1 square is 1, and minus 1 square is 1. So this is AB vector divided by modulus of AB vector. So if we are multiplying these two means, we will be getting force vector F dash. And now here, in this case two, instead of a force, a force F is acting in space, and instead of this passing through points, instead of this passing through points, if theta x, theta y, and theta is angle made by this f with respect to x, angle made by this f with respect to y, and angle made by this f with respect to z is given means how to write the force vector. How to write the force vector instead of passing through points if the angle theta x, theta y, and theta z is given. And to arrive this f vector equation, First, let us consider a two-dimensional force system in vectorial approach. So you consider a force F is acting at an angle of theta x with respect to x-axis and it is acting at an angle of theta y with respect to y-axis. In vectorial approach, the unit vector along x-axis is i vector and the unit vector along the y-axis is j vector. And you have to remember that in analytical approach only, Horizontal component is cos theta, vertical component is sin theta. But in vectorial approach, the horizontal component is product of scalar into unit vector and vertical component is also product of scalar into unit vector. So the horizontal component of this F is Fx and the unit vector along X is I vector. So the force vector along horizontal axis is Fx I vector. And Vertical component is Fy and the unit vector along y axis is j. So the vertical component of the force F is Fy j vector. Hence, in vectorial approach, this F vector can be written as horizontal component Fxi vector plus vertical component Fy j vector. And now if you consider this triangle, this this length this this line is F vector. So what is modulus of f vector? Modulus of f vector is f. So modulus of f vector is f. And this horizontal comp horizontal force vector is fxi vector. And what is modulus of fxi vector? So modulus of fxi vector is fx. And this vertical component is fyj vector. And what is modulus of this fyj vector? So modulus of fy vector is fy. So in this triangle, this line represents f this line represent fx and this vertical line represent fy and we know that the angle made by this f with respect to x is theta x and this angle made by f with respect to y is theta y and if this is theta y means this one is also theta y alternate angle are same so this one is theta y now now in this triangle what is cos theta x cos theta x is nothing but this x distance divided by this Inclined distance. So cos theta x is divided by fx divided by f. And similarly, what is cos theta y? Cos theta y is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Adjacent is fy and hypotenuse is f. So cos theta y is equal to fy by f. So this equation can be rewritten as fx is equal to f cos theta x. And this equation can be written as fy is equal to f cos theta y. And if you are extending this to z axis, means you'll be getting f is z is equal to f cos theta z. So the component of force fx is equal to f cos theta x and the component of force along y direction is f cos theta y and the component of force along z axis is f cos theta z 
in vectorial approach if theta x theta y and theta y z is given so now if a force of f is acting from origin in space at an angle of theta x theta y and theta z to respective x and y z axis means then we need if we need to write this vector vector form of this f means f vector is equal to fx i vector plus f y j vector plus f z k vector so from the above we know that fx equal to f cos theta x f y is equal to f cos theta y and f z is equal to f cos theta z to substitute that here and if the common term in this three equation is f so take f commonly outside so f into cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector so f vector is equal to scalar f into this unit vector cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector so by definition we know that vector is scalar into unit vector so hence if you are comparing that with this equation means f vector is equal to f into cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector means the scalar is f f is scalar and this cos theta x i plus cos theta y j plus cos theta z k is unit vector so f vector is equal to scalar into unit vector and we know that the notation for unit vector is n cap so n cap is equal to cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector so the unit vector along this line of action is n cap and that n cap is equal to cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector so we know that modulus of unit vector is always equal to 1 magnitude of unit vector is always it is equal to 1 so if n cap is equal to 1 means this is equal to root of what is modulus of unit vector root of cos square theta x plus cos square theta y plus cos square theta z since modulus of unit vector is equal to 1 if you are equating this equation means you will be getting cos square theta x plus cos square theta y plus cos square theta z is equal to 1 so this is the condition of the unit vector when it is equal to 1 always unit vector will be equal to modulus of unit vector is equal to e equal to 1 and if you are using that you will be getting this equation cos square theta x plus cos square theta y plus cos square theta z is equal to 1 and if the, in the problem if theta x and theta y is given means you can use this equation for finding out the third angle and as you see from here a force vector can be defined by two ways the passing through points passing through points a b is given the coordinate of a and coordinate of b is given means the force vector along that line of action is equal to scalar magnitude force scalar quantity that is magnitude of the force f into unit vector along that line of action is n cap a b so the formula for finding out that unit vector in the first case is a b vector divided by modulus of a b vector instead of this passing through points if the theta x theta y and theta z is given means the unit vector sorry instead of this passing through points a b this theta x theta y and theta z is given means the force vector is this scalar f into unit vector but here the unit vector is cos theta x i vector plus cos theta y j vector plus cos theta z k vector so this is two different definition of force vector if passing through points is given means this is the formula for f vector if theta x theta y theta z k is given means this is the formula for finding the force vector and now what is the sign convention to be followed in three dimensional vectorial approach means always x right side direction it is positive left side direction it is negative in y it is upward direction is positive downward direction is negative similar to that of two dimensional in three dimensional additionally we will be having z axis in z downward direction is positive and this upward direction is negative so you should remember this in z this downward direction is positive and this upward direction is negative to understand that sign convention see here a point a is lying in x axis at a distance of 8 meter in this direction means from margin this point a is lying at a distance of 8 meter so along x it is 8 meter and along y and z it is 0 comma 0 similarly point b is lying at a distance of 6 meter in the upper direction of z means 
the coordinate point of b is coordinate point of b is it is lying in z means x 0 y 0 and in z axis it is lying in upward direction at a distance of 6 meter means point minus 6 so 0 comma 0 comma minus 6 and if you consider a point in space which is at a distance of 2 meter in x axis 3 meter in y axis and 4 meter in z axis means from this origin you try you assume that you are walking to this point c by covering all this x y and z so from point o i am going to move to point c by covering all this x y and z axis so first i am moving 2 meter in which axis negative of x so hence it is minus 2 next i am moving in first view of y axis for a distance of 3 meter so plus 3 and next in z axis i am moving in first view of z for a 4 meter in the positive direction of z i am moving 4 meter means plus 4 so hence the coordinate point of c is minus 2 3 comma 4 and similar to that of statics of particles in two dimension in statics of particles of three dimension also we are going to see concurrent system of forces only so what is concurrent system of forces if the forces line of action is meeting at a single point means then the system of force we call it as concurrent force system so here in three dimension also we are going to see only concurrent system of forces so here also we need to replace this concurrent system of forces into a single resultant force which will produce same effect as that of this number of concurrent forces so you have to replace this phi force by a single resultant force so here in vector approach you need to replace this phi concurrent system of force vector into a single resultant force vector which will produce the same effect and if i am replacing this by a single resultant force vector means that will be having some angle with respect to x axis is theta x angle with respect to y axis is theta y and angle with respect to theta z axis is theta z and formula is this resultant vector is equal to sum of individual force vector this resultant vector r vector is equal to sum of the individual force vector that is f1 vector plus f2 vector plus f3 vector plus f4 vector plus f5 vector so the formula for resultant vector in concurrent system of forces sum of all the individual force vector so if we, and that is equal to resultant forces along x vector i vector plus resultant forces along y vector j vector plus resultant force along z k vector so this is the formula for finding out the resultant vector so to find out the magnitude of resultant vector r is equal to root of rx square plus ry square plus rz square so we'll see that detail in solving the problem and formula for finding out the direction theta x theta y and theta z is cos theta is cos theta x is equal to rx by r cos theta y is equal to ry by r and cos theta z is equal to rz by z so you'll be using all this in solving the problem and next we will solve one problem in concurrent system of forces acting in space that is three dimension so the description of the problem is shown here it is determine the resultant of the system of concurrent forces so determine the resultant of system of concurrent forces so one two three three concurrent forces are acting from the point origin so you need to replace these three concurrent system of forces into a single resultant force having a following magnitude so the magnitude of first two force is 280 newton the magnitude of second force is 520 newton and magnitude of the third force is 270 newton and all the three forces starting point is origin 0 comma 0 comma 0 and the another point of this 280 newton is 12 comma 6 comma minus 4 and the another point of this second force is minus 3 comma minus 4 comma 12 and the another point of this third force 270 newton is 6 comma 3 comma minus 6 so yeah three concurrent system of forces is acting in space from origin so the first concurrent force is 280 newton and they're passing through point is origin and 12 comma 6 comma minus 4 second concurrent force is 520 newton and the passing through point is origin and minus 3 comma minus 4 comma 
equal and the third concurrent force is 270 newton and the passing through point is original 6 comma minus 3 comma minus 6 so you need to replace this three concurrent system of forces which is acting in space into a single resultant force into a single resultant force so and we have seen that resultant force is nothing but sum of the individual force vector resultant force vector is nothing but sum of the individual force vector so the formula for resultant vector is sum of the individual force vector so there are three individual forces that is p vector plus t vector plus f vector so the formula for resultant force vector is this p vector plus t vector plus f vector but in the question they have given the magnitude alone so they have given p they have given t they have given f so from this p t f you need to find out p vector t vector and f vector so how to find out p vector by definition we know that vector is nothing but magnitude into direction so the unit vector along this line of action o a is n cap o a so the formula for n cap o a is o a vector divided by modulus of o a vector so you see that if this p is not parallel to x y or z means you cannot uh, you, the unit vector along this passing through point is n cap o a so if it is passing through x axis means you can write 280 i vector if it is passing through y axis means you can write 280 j vector if it is passing through z axis means you can write 280 k vector but it is not passing through any of the x y z but it is passing through two points and the unit vector along this passing through point is n cap o a formula for n cap o a is o a vector divided by modulus of o a vector so what is o a vector 12 minus 0 i vector plus 6 minus 0 j vector plus minus 4 minus 0 k vector which gives you minus 4 k vector divided by what is modulus of y vector root of 12 square plus 6 square plus 4 square so upon simplification of this equation you will be getting p vector equal to 240 i vector plus 120 j vector minus 80 k vector so now or to find out this resultant vector you have calculated the first concurrent force p vector next you need to calculate this t vector and f vector in the same fashion next you need to write the vector form of this t so vector form of this t is the scalar t into unit vector along this ob is n cap ob so n cap ob is ob vector divided by modulus of ob vector t they have given as 520 into what is ob vector minus 3 minus 0 i vector so minus 3 i vector minus 4 minus 0 j vector so minus 4 j vector plus 12 minus 0 k vector hence it is plus 12 k vector divided by root of minus 3 square plus minus 4 square plus 12 square will be giving a value of 13 and if you are simplifying this equation means you will be getting t vector equal to minus 120 i vector minus 160 j vector plus 480 k vector so now for to find out the resultant vector you have calculated you have find out the two individual force vector p vector and t vector so if you are able to find out the third individual force vector that is this f vector means you can substitute there and find out the resultant force vector so now for to find out the f vector you know the magnitude of f is 270 newton so magnitude of f is 270 newton and unit vector along this line of action oc is n cap oc so formula for n cap oc is oc vector divided by modulus of oc vector so oc vector is 6 minus 0 i vector minus 3 minus 0 so minus 3 j vector minus 6 minus 0 so minus 6 k vector divided by root of 6 square plus minus 3 square plus minus 6 square will be giving you a value of 9 and if you are simplifying this equation means you will be getting f vector is equal to 180 i vector minus 90 j vector minus 180 k vector now substitute this p vector t vector and f vector in this equation of resultant vector and add all that you will be getting an value of 300 i vector minus 130 j vector plus 220 k vector so substitute all that individual force vector in this equation and at the respective i j k vector you will be getting 300 i vector minus 130 j vector plus 220 k vector so resultant vector is equal to 
three hundred i vector minus one thirty j vector plus two twenty k vector. So we know that r vector is r x i vector plus r y j vector plus r z k vector. And if you are comparing this means r x is equal to three hundred, r y equal to minus one thirty, r z is equal to two twenty. And magnitude of r is root of r x square plus r y square plus r z square will be giving you a value of three ninety four point zero eight newton. So you can replace this. Three concurrent system of forces by a single force of resultant force whose magnitude is equal to 394.08 newton. So you have calculated only the magnitude of the resultant force. For to find out the direction, you know that cos theta is equal to r x by r, cos theta y is equal to r y by r, and cos theta is equal to r z by r. So if you are substituting this value of r x, r y, r z. And this R in this three equation means you will be getting theta is equal to forty point four two degree, theta y is equal to one not one not nine point two six degree, and theta is that is equal to fifty six degree. So hence you can replace these three system of concurrent forces into a single resultant force of magnitude three ninety four point zero eight newton, and directions theta x forty point four two theta y. One hundred nine point two six and theta is at fifty six degree.